This video is brought to you by my wonderful Patreon team. If you want to join the Patreon team, please feel free to click the link down below. And if not, that's totally fine. I still hope you enjoy the video. I have before spoke about my love of the horror genre, but more specifically, the slasher genre on this channel before. I strongly believe it's possibly the most entertaining form of horror there is out there and has created some of the most iconic characters the film industry has ever seen. Over time, these films and characters have fallen victim to the terrible reboots over the previous last few years that take themselves way too seriously, losing the colour and the charm and the fun that the genre brought to the table in the first place. Reboots of the early 2000s and 2010s felt like they needed to bring a certain edge to a character that was never really needed. From the likes of Myers to Jason and Freddy, they all became edgy shadows of their former selves, losing the charm that they had in the first place. The slasher genre never saw itself as high art, but instead acted as a good popcorn flick that you and your friends could gather around and have a good time with. But all these movies got rid of that good time and decided to go for one look, and that look was dirt and disgusting and brown and it was just dull to look at and they all started blending into one boring slosh of crappy reboots. But there was one slasher character who never changed, and that character is of course my favourite slasher, Chucky. <laughs> The Child's Play franchise has its ups and downs throughout the many years it's been running, but it's decided to stick to its guns. Or knives. Okay, or rulers, whatever does the job really. But it was only a matter of time that everyone's favourite psychotic doll would get a reboot. But when I first heard about this movie, and same with many others, there was a big air of doubt that came along with it. It was trying to be more grounded, instead of Charles Ray using voodoo to take control of a doll, instead they wanted to go for more of a more robotic route for the reboot. And when I first saw this movie, what I saw wasn't just a simple revival of the slasher genre, but instead it brought an entirely new set of colours, along with our favourite villain. Child's Play 2019, despite being a complete departure of the original, still stays in spirit of the 88 film. Don Mancini's original 88 film was responsible for the boom of pediophobia, the fear of dolls. Many adults and children were scared by the uncanny smile of the good guy doll. Many of us never found ourselves fearing what our toys could possibly do or models or even decorations, but Child's Play played on our comfort and allowed us to invite a serial killer into our homes and into our kids' beds. And despite the franchise becoming more of a comedy, in its roots there still lingered that pediophobia that the movie created for so many audience goers. And to this date that lingering phobia still plays a big part in the identity of the Child's Play franchise. Over time we have become tired and numb to the horrors of the 80s and cheesy voodoo and living dolls have been done to death but for the reboot they wanted something to be fresh but still remain in line of the original. Director Lars Klevberg needed to find a way to weave Chucky back into your comfort zone, back into your homes, but now in the palm of your hands. We love technology. Phones, computers, TVs, whatever you're watching on right now is all part of our day to day. A new smartphone comes along and people will go crazy just to get the brand new software. Brand new consoles hit the shelves, people will buy six of them just to sell them on. And we will go mad for anything that allow our lives to feel just a little bit more comfortable. But if there was only some sort of machine that would help us with our chores and connect to all our appliances throughout the house and could be connected to just one source. Well, let me introduce Buddy. Everything you could want it to do, it can do. Control your heating, turn on all your electronics, and of course, listen to all your darkest secrets. Buddy is there for you, and he is a friend till the end. Just like the original Child's Play used pediophobia as a source of fear, this time around, Child's Play 2019 taps right into technophobia, the phobia and fear of technology. From invasion of privacy to the way we've become dependent on our phones and of course the possibility that one day machines will turn on us. But that's impossible, right? Alexa, do an evil laugh. Tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, <hell. laughs> I'm trying to make her be evil for the video but it ain't working. This is staying in. 
But why am I discussing the phobias of the franchise? That's because I believe the combined cinematography of this movie and the directing have created one of the best looking slasher films that is full of identity and style, but reminding you that danger lingers in every single scene. Child's Play's dependency on technology becomes more of just a statement on the people who live within this film's universe, but it's used as a tool of fear. Before we jump into the technology though, let's look at Chucky's design first. This time around they wanted to get away from that baby Annabelle inspired doll from the original films and focus more on the modern robotic toys that kids have nowadays. From the lack of articulation within his arms and legs, to the limited facial movements that a toy could only do. But it's in the colour design where Chucky is most important here. His bright blue eyes that turn red when angry, the orange red and blue shirt that dawns underneath his buddy jumpsuit. This look is bright, colourful and is meant to say to you, hey, I'm Chucky. And from the word go, these colours play an important role in the world of child's play. Orange, red and blue weave their way into every backdrop and scenery from the house's lights, Christmas decorations, the janitor's basement and of course the technology store. There is a clear direction and choice to link every single one of these colours and bring them together to mean one thing to the audience. Chucky is everywhere. You're never able to get away from this doll because he lurks in every single colour that you see on screen. The main colour of Chucky here is of course red. Red to us means danger, evil, something's wrong. The film's visual style is able to tell a story. The film is able to control your anticipation when something evil is about to happen. The movie will just flash a red light at you and all of a sudden these three colours are more than just a backdrop but instead become a narrative and an emotional controlling device for you as the viewer. And we feel like we're invited to a personal joke that the characters of the movie never truly get a hold of. Because we are aware of how evil Chucky is as a doll, we are able to see this huge unnatural red light that hangs on the side of Andy's apartment, lingering evil and telling the audience that shit is about to go down in this block of flats. And I both appreciate this as a visual design but also as a cheeky reminder of what's to come. Okay, now let's get away from red and talk about that orange. Orange in this movie acts as a tool of Chucky's presence in the film. There is a warmth that's meant to come from the colour, but it turns into something way more sinister over time. The colour is mostly used when Chucky is toying with his prey or playing with them like a toy should. At the start of the film, when the man kills himself after reprogramming Chucky, an orange glow sets the scene for his suicide. When Chucky learns he can kill mum's boyfriend, orange lights up his sinister smile in the dark. And of course, when he is in full control of the technology in the store, there is only one colour that lingers, and that is of course, orange. Orange and red act as a pathway for Andy to follow to find his way towards Chucky as we see in the technology store. And in between those colours there is one colour that's always there and always stopping them from taking over. And that is of course the innocence of blue. Blue in this movie is the innocence of Andy, Chucky and even his mum. There is a safety that comes when this colour is used as a prime focus. From Andy's mum's uniform to Andy's coat and of course even that light that bonds the friendship between Chucky and Andy. And even at the start of the movie it's in Chucky's innocent eyes. But unfortunately these two colours can never be together and they always feel like they're locked in an eternal battle. And the film isn't shy of showing you this. As Andy watches Chucky from his room, the world is split right in two between the two colours. When Chucky is stalking the neighbour and Andy can't stop him, an impossible lighting becomes covered in an orange glow. And when it's time to die, well then the lights all become red. But my favourite touches are right at the end of the movie when Andy finally puts a stop to Chucky, his world becomes blue in its entirety, with no other colour in sight. But of course to poke fun at the classic slasher fake out that comes with all slasher movies, the director flashes a little glimpse of orange right before <coughs> and that was just to make sure you was paying attention. And this is why I love this film. I agree it's a far departure from original and there's no way that it's going to be superior from the original Mancini's film because that's just a classic. But it made an attempt to make the slasher genre look like art. It's so rare that we get to see so much love and style put into not just the characters but the world around them in the genre such as the slasher film. 
Child's Play was a refreshing take on a genre that was just so obsessed with the colour of blood and gore. And this film knew that it was able to have fun with this silly concept of a killer doll and wanted to invite you into its own joke and uplifting sense of tongue in cheek horror that the slusher genre should deserve. Chucky brought personality into every scene that he was present and brought so many new colours to the genre along with him. This film honestly deserves another viewing and honestly a sequel because it has so much life and energy in every single scene that it creates. Yes, it's very different from the original, but it's different in all the right ways and in a way that I could see the slasher genre attempting to recreate in the future. So if you have the time, if you're able to watch this movie, please do and I can promise you, you definitely won't regret it.